My name's John Giles, we run in Supergas and Supercomp, which are American based classes. They, 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 they're, they're prob Supergas is probably one of the oldest classes. We run a 8.9 seconds in one class and 9.9 .9 in the other. It's, um, it's the class that I want to be at where it's not all about uh, how much money you've got, it's, it's a bracket class. So for me it was more about uh, the enjoyment of that and trying to get the car to slow down onto a a, a dictated number. So it's all about reaction, how quick you get away from the line to what you run. In qualification, it doesn't matter about the reaction time because you've just got to get close to the 990. That will give you a number one spot and you work your way all the way down. In elimination, it, you can run a 1005 as long as you've reacted quicker and you've outrun the other man, then you, you, can, you can win the race. On the second qualifier we had in Supergas today, um, we want to run a 990. We ran a 990 with a one. One of the important things on here is the 004 light. So anywhere, anywhere in the world, that would be a perfect super gas run for my class. That would that would win me any any elimination round. But as we're qualifying at the moment, that gets me number one qualifier. The team's called Raw Willis after the 1941 Willis that the car is. My shape was 40 to 41, and then they stopped it. Um, it's more of a hot rod shape, but mine's been adapted for drag racing, which in America it's a very popular shape. Got a big block Chevy, runs on methanol. So it's a 598 cubic inch Jeff Ball engine, uh, runs on alcohol. It's got computer, computer on, on board for delay so you can slow the car down with throttle stops. It's, um, it's not a heads up car, it, it's just a, a, a bracket car which, which I have a, an index to, to run to. From, from a young age I was always interested in, in cars and speed and the acceleration side of it more than top end. It was the, it was the thrill of the acceleration which, which really got me. Um, I think it's the challenge as well of getting the car to run consistent as it, as it does because we've, we've got a proper dial in but it's just the, the whole speed and acceleration was the, was the main bug. So you, you put your foot flat to the floor, you hold a button on, on, the, on the steering wheel which is the trans brake, you, you're flat out with your foot, you let that go and, and first thing you see is the sky really and then, then it comes down. With my car I get to about one second into the run and the stop will come on which shuts the car better down, slows me down. For about three seconds I put into my into my delay box which, which keeps the shutdown on the go. You can still travel along at 4,300 rpm and then they come off again and you've got 7,000 rpm just lifting the car off and then that takes you through to the end. Hopefully with all the information you've got from your weather station and your computer you should run bang on the number the 890 or the 990. The adrenaline rush of that, that speed, that acceleration is uh, it's just incredible to feel you know and it, it's you don't ever get bored with that. One of the reasons we got into drag racing was we wanted a lifestyle event. We lost a little boy, um, 2007, um, and then my wife, uh, we, we were lucky enough to have a, an, a daughter, Francesca, and then three months into that, she got breast cancer, my wife. Quite an aggressive cancer, so it had to be worked on quickly. But I think what drag racing did, it, it, it gave us a focus outside of what was going on. So losing a son is probably one of the worst things you'll experience. Anybody will experience then the cancer and then it, all this just sort of imploded. But I think drag racing probably, probably kept my family intact because it made us realise that you know, there, there, is, uh, there is other enjoyable things out there. Not everything goes wrong. It's an escapism from reality. You, you need that and it's just actually that we've carried on doing it. My children love it. My wife enjoys it. She thinks she's very appreciative of what it did for us as a couple. Probably made us stronger with the help of these, these sort of uh, events and people. Everybody's friends, everybody is close. If you have a problem, you break apart, you can borrow it. There's none, there's none of the, uh, the there is competitiveness, but, but we, we remain friends. 
The, the only competitiveness here where you don't like your opponent is for quarter of a mile. After that, it's all back to jokes, fun. It's the social side of this is huge for, for everybody. You know, it's part of their, their, their yearly regime is to get out here and enjoy yourself with people with the same thoughts, same views, same, same um, passions. I think you have a fear in the fire up road, which is the road leading to the track. I think you get a little bit of nerves, but as soon as you're strapped in, you've got your crash helmet on, you're thinking about what you're doing, you drive the car around to the track, that all goes, it completely goes. And I can't explain why, it just does. Once you go into the start line and, and you burn out and you know you've had a good burnout, you, you physically relax, you feel good, you're looking at your crew because there's nothing more you can do when you're strapped in the car, you're very reliant on them. I think the emotions and the adrenaline rush of, of when you leave that line, you know you're on your own, you don't want to let your crew down, you want to do well, you either want to dial the car in perfectly or you want to beat the opponent. That rush of uh, adrenaline, it's, it's nearly indescribable. It, and when you win as well, that's, uh, it's everything, you know, it's, it's what makes it all worthwhile. So the Hockenheim win we had this year was, uh, was a huge thing for us. You know, it's in front, it's not on your homeland. You're, you're a long way from home. You know there's a lot of people that are cheering you on. Um, and we started going through these rounds and then the realisation set in that, we, you know, we're going to win this. And then all of a sudden you seem to have this, this thing come over us that just knew we were going to win. I have no idea why, but we just felt we were going to. Everything was working. The emotion after I'd won was, was huge for me because um, not everything goes right all the time in your home life and your, and your work life and, and this hobby. So the emotions were huge. I know my wife and my eldest daughter were crying. So it was the first one we'd won. Uh, and I think it was just really the fact that you hadn't let anybody down. Everybody does drag racing to win. There's no doubt about it. That's why everybody's here. They, they put the dedication, the money, everything into it, the family commitment that you have to have. Everybody wants to win and everybody's happy for you. Even the people you beat, they're happy for you. They're the first to come over and shake your hand and vice versa if you lose. But the competitiveness is huge. It's, you wouldn't spend all this money if you didn't want to win. You come up here and you can see that it doesn't matter about bills at home. It doesn't matter about all the, all the normal things that you have to deal with. This is a complete, a complete escapism. You just enjoy yourself with your friends and family. And then you get in that car that you put so much effort into, so much work. The, the sacrifices that your friends have to make as well and then to go and win and do what you do, it's, uh, there isn't a feeling like it. There really isn't a feeling like it. Yeah, everyone knows who who should know, just like thank you, you know. To me I can probably sit here and say yes, this card did help save my life.